All right, here we go. Another shortcut video. I'm reaching Nexus, and today I'm going to try and explain how I made the text mask that is on this video that I posted on the forums. So this is a very complex so I'm to try and make something a little bit simpler, uh, something a little bit easier to understand. This one is for DRM Musical Box. John Ray and Birdhead399. So I hope it comes in handy. Hope it makes sense. I've done a little bit of prep work here. I've made myself an animated film of some flutes that I'm gonna do my animation on top of or do my masking on top of. Uh, I've given myself a couple of images so I can show you how these transitions were made a little later in the video. So I'll just play this real quick. And you can see I have some stylized photos and then have those animated and uh, and have a transition on them. So I just saved myself a little bit of time there, not cheating because that's not the text masking animation. I have some music that I'll add back, I'll add in later. But first things first, let's go ahead and insert a video track. We have a new video track. I'm going to get myself a plain color. In this case, I'm going to choose white. I'm going to drag that on to my video. And I think somewhere in this area, a little less than halfway through the video, is where I'm going to have it start. So this will be the layer where my text goes. Bring my scrubber in there, my playhead, and I will click filters, and here I will add text. Probably could just search. Text simple. There we go. Text simple. Now, one thing that I love about shotcut is you can have any font you want in this text simple my video is about floofs so i'm going to go ahead and put in floofs not a big fan of verdana because it doesn't give me a whole lot of space to view i went out to uh to google fonts to show you that real quick for those of you that don't know you might not be web developers there is a Google open font library. And here you can go out and you can select pretty much any anything you want. I went ahead, gave myself font properties and a width of maximum size. And then I just found one that I liked for my project. I installed it on my computer because you can download the font right here and uh, you can install it on your computer. They're all true type fonts. So let's go back to Shotcut and I will show you I had this Alpha Slab 1 font. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. You can see it's a nice big blocky letter font. There's my floofs. And what you can do now that you have the font is you can tell it to use the font size and then you can do something ridiculous like 950. And oh, look, it doesn't. It doesn't actually go to 950, and that's because the simple font or the text simple uh, font size is restrained by the box that it's in. So the trick there is to increase that box size, let's say to 20,000. Now I can't see anything. I'm going to make my font color black. It's still not on the screen, clearly. So let's put it at like a negative 10,000 position on the X. And now there we go. Now we have something that's somewhat close to what I need. It still doesn't look like a 950 point font. So we'll have to do a little tweaking there. But it looks like uh, maybe something in the negative 9,000 range. There we go. That gets me the O's. I like that. And then for the height of this box, I'm going to go much bigger, maybe something in the 2000 range. Now look how big those O's are getting. Maybe even go as high as 2500. It doesn't have to be precise. And then I'll move up. Oh, maybe 
500. No, it's going to be somewhere in the range of 900. There we go. Look at how much of the screen that takes up. That's fantastic. And then I can, from there, I can put my cursor over the position of X and I can use my mouse wheel down or up to get that position just right. And then I can do the same thing here. Move those letters down and excellent. So there we go. So not very magical. It's just black text on a white background. Uh, now what I will do is I will add in, I haven't even keyframed that yet, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in now my chroma key symbol. There we go. And I'm going to select black as my key color. And look at that. Now I can actually see things through my text. So you can see my background in there, and that's great but you've probably seen a simple mask before, so we're not gonna dwell on it for very long. Now I'm going to go ahead, and get that animation going. So in the text simple, there is keyframing for those positions. I have a great starting position here. That's gonna be those zeros, those double O's in the center of the screen like that. And I am going to go to the beginning and trigger a keyframe there. Now, I'm going to go all the way to the end, and this is not, I must stress this, this is not precise. You're going to have to tweak it over and over again. But I'm going to go to the end of my, of my clip, there we go, and I'm going to set it to something that I think is reasonable, which is the width of my screen, which would be 1920, and then some height, which I think will be uh, 1080. And then I'm just going to give it a 0, 0 to see where it lands. So there you go. It's a little low. So we'll probably knock it up maybe 200. That gets it closer to the middle. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm just eyeballing that. And then I don't want it to be squished up against the edges like that. So I will kick it into 820. And then that'll require me to put in an offset. And I think 50 will get me. Yeah, there we go. 50 looks pretty good. So there's that. And if I go farther back, you can see it moves off. It moves up. It moves a little too high. So this is where you have to go in and kind of fix the animation, so to say. So somewhere around here is the apex of its height on the page, which I think is going to be right about, mm, yeah, it's right about there where it starts to move back down again. You see that? So I'll go to that point, and at that point, I will move it back down to center. So I'll use my Y coordinates and I'll just use my mouse wheel to kind of get it down where I want it to be. And again, this is not precise. I, can, I couldn't figure out any way to make this keyframing precise or to come up with some kind of fancy math that made it easier. But I just eyeball it in place and then play with it. That's pretty smooth. And then you'll see it'll do its best to kind of keep it there. So now, there we go. We've got the moving text zooming in. I could have it scrolling across the page if I played with the X position. I could have it scrolling up and down the page if I played with the Y position. But for my particular film, I'm just going to have it zooming in and out like that. So go back to the timeline. Here we go. And I want it to be a little more dramatic than that. So I am going to use a fade in effect. So let's do a fade in video on this clip and we'll adjust opacity instead. And we'll set that to, well, I don't know, two, three seconds. Let's do three. It seems like it'd be pretty dramatic. I'm gonna need obviously now a, an audio track you know, if we're going to do flu, so we have to have 
dramatic audio. So there we go. Put that in there. Now I, I did cheat a little. I know that I want my sound to start somewhere right around here. I figured that out earlier. Split that audio, remove it. And then somewhere right around here, we'll just split it again, remove the excess. All right, so let's take a look at this video. Let's see what it looks like. So there's there's the the text mask animated cutout in the uh, in the video floof. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, I will give you one more hint here. I'll, get, I'll show you one more thing. I'll show you how I made those overlays before we get going, and then I will append floofs to that. No, I don't need animated floofs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pictures of floofs and I'm going to put them on layers one there and one there. These animations are overlapped slightly like that. The top one then is going to use a filter. First filter that I'm going to use is going to be, if I can remember, I think it's half tone. Yep, there we go. So it had a half tone on it, and then it also had a filter of posterize. Okay. And I just, I believe I had the Half tone after the posterize, and the posterize came first. I think. Shaka didn't like it when I just did it there, though. Let's come back to it. Here we go. And so I had it kicked up pretty high with the posterize effect to really simplify the image. And then as you do that, you can see the half tone dot radius can be tweaked. And what you can get is sort of that that printed effect, that that multicolor printed effect. And then just played around until I found something that worked on all the images. Then for the transition between the two, I used the I'm trying to remember, I used a, a mask and it was from file. So the from file mask. And I believe I used the vertical bar, bar vertical, there we go. Uh, and then you can see the images are different sizes. So of course, each one had to have its own size and position. So I'll do that really quick. Size and position, there we go. And this was just, a, this was just an eyeball sort of look here. I can go to keyframes, I did keyframe it. So I was at the beginning of the clip as such and found a good position at the beginning of the clip like that. And then I said, all right, I'm going to have this keyframed here. And then I'm going to have it go to the end of the clip. And then I'm going to uh, pan. So set one there and then we'll say, well, pan and zoom into the doggo here as they disappear from the page. And then there's a there's a mask keyframe. And so I went from I can find just with the 
end clip here, you can see the beginning of the next clip is there. So that's where I keyframed in from a full image. Let me go to the end of this clip to a no image transition, just like that. And I will go back to the timeline, select my next clip. And of course, here I would only need a size and position. But if you're doing a bunch, I had 15, you'll have to create each one, one layer below the other. So it's, it's a little bit tedious. I ended up with 15 different video layers and one in, one uh, one picture on each one. But then I was able to just copy these uh, these filters. So I just selected all four filters from my very first image and just pasted it onto each subsequent image. And because they were all laid out with the exact same amount of overlap, it just works. So that was good. So let me go ahead and resize this animation with a size. There it is. And zoom it in. We'll go from the belt at the beginning here, keyframe, the beginning of this doggo, which you can't even see, but I know it's there. I'm going to say keyframe that, and it's going to very dramatically scroll up and zoom in on his face. So I will drag that on down. And if you don't know what I'm doing there, I realize sometimes I do things that people don't realize I'm holding the shift key while I have the size position and rotate filter selected. And that allows me, even though I can't see the handle to grab the image and drag it around and position it. So there, that should be done. And now let's go back and see what that looks like. Oh, see, here's a good example. So I can come to this and I can get my, I deselect that one. I'm going to deselect the mask and I'm just going to leave these two selected. I'm going to copy and then go to my next image and just simply paste those on there. So now my second doggo is going to have the same exact effect. So we'll then hit play. And when it gets to that transition, oh, didn't exactly uh, didn't exactly go where I thought it would, did it? Could have sworn I had that keyframed right, but I guess I didn't. Oh, I diesel <laughs> I deselected them. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. So it is, it is interesting. Okay, here it goes. So it zooms in, you see him, and then whoop, we go to the very next image and there's my doggo and he's keyframed and everything's great. And then if I had all those others, it would it would carry on. So hope you uh, hope you learned something. I know the, the most important part is that text mask. And again, it's very simple. It's just keyframing, it's setting incredibly large font sizes you can pick up any font you want. It's very easy to adapt. So like if I wanted to, it's not going to be the same size. But what I'll do here is I'll show you. I have another font on my computer that I like. So let me, let me see if I can find that. That ROG. There we go. See, so you can see you can get the ROG font in there. It's, a, it's not the exact same size, so it doesn't lay out exactly the same. Um, but it carries through. Follows pretty much the same rules. It may even, if we get to the end here, end up in the exact same rules. Probably going to be a little bit. Yeah, see, it wasn't exactly the same. But uh, you, you get the idea. You can use any font you want. Like you can literally download every font here. These are all. Uh, these are all open fonts, and uh, you can use them in your projects. And uh, just you know, go wild, create something great, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.